G'day folks, today I'm going to show you how to find your relative major and your relative minor chords in one easy move with the baby finger. And at the end of this video I'm going to show you a beautiful little scale that you can play around both of those chord positions. You don't want to miss it, so stay tuned and we'll get right at it. Alright, here we go. If uh, you're playing in a band with somebody, or you're jamming with somebody, and someone says to you, uh, I've got to sing this song in D sharp major. And he goes and he takes his capo and he puts it on the first fret of his acoustic guitar. And of course he's allowed to play his D chord like this when he plays it here. Up one fret. Because that's just what singers do. Such. <laughs> uh, and you're thinking to yourself as a lead player, oh my god. D sharp major, uh, where the hell can I find my home base, safe pentatonic scale to at least start picking around? What's my relative minor pentatonic scale around D sharp major? Okay, well that's what we're going to do today. All right. So first of all, when you're playing a C chord like that, if that nut wasn't there, you'd have to do the bar chord like that. Okay, so with that position, and you're going up the neck with that bar chord position, like that, that's what you have to do to find the right chord which will allow you to find the relative minor very quickly. So if he's saying we're in D sharp major, if you know the notes of your fifth string, that's an open A, A sharp, B, C, C sharp, D, D sharp on the sixth fret. So you play that C chord formation but with the bar, with the root, on the D sharp on the fifth string, there is your D sharp major. Now here's the cool thing. To find your relative minor, you take that baby finger, you put it right behind your ring finger on the third string, on the fifth fret in this case, and now the root goes from here, it goes to under your bar finger, your first finger, on the same string, still a fifth string root, but now to C. And now you're playing an A minor chord formation. Again, if that nut wasn't there, you'd have to play your A minor like that. And we're just going up the neck. So there we are. We're going from the D sharp major. There's the D sharp. Baby finger goes behind the ring finger to the third string, fifth fret. There's a relative minor to D sharp major. One move of the pinky. There you go that can be applied all over the neck. Someone says to you, I gotta sing this song in E minor. Okay, so you know your notes on your fifth string. That's an E on the seventh fret. You play your A minor form with the bar. There's your E minor. Take that baby finger now from behind the ring finger, put it down to the C chord formation, 5th string, 10th fret, that note is a G. That's a G major now. E minor, G major. G major is your relative major to E minor. Let's try one more. Someone says to you, I gotta sing this in B minor, okay? There's your A, B sharp, B. B minor chord. 
take that baby finger, you put it down the fifth string and the C chord formation with this bar, that note now is a D. So we have D minor, relative major is D. How cool is that? So let's go back to that D sharp major. D sharp major, relative minor, C minor. So if the D sharp major is the key signature that this guy, your your uh, your lead singer in your band is playing in or singing in, you now know the relative minor is C. You can pick your pentatonic scale around that D sharp major in a C minor position all day long. So whether your key signature in the song you're playing is C, C minor or D sharp major or anywhere in the neck in those two positions, this scale is right around this chord form right here. And matter of fact, every one of these notes where this finger covers is a note in the scale. It just covers four frets. It's a nice tight scale uh, over four frets. So here it is. I don't keep my finger barred right across when I'm doing improvised uh, licks at all. I just use that finger as my anchor and then I come down as I need it. Another little tip when you are picking, improvising, depending on what key that you're in. Uh, you want to, when you're phrasing, you want to rest once in a while on the root note. So if we're in D sharp major, I'm going to use that same scale. I'm going to rest my phrase once in a while on the root note D sharp. If we're in C sharp minor, same scale, same licks. just a great scale to play around those two chord positions and an easy way to find your relative major and relative minor in a second, literally in one second. Hope you liked this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up and uh, subscribe to the channel for more tips that are coming every week. Uh, also check out my website, jwcollinsauthor.com. I have uh, several books out now. I write period westerns and historical fiction. Uh, check me out on Facebook and Twitter. And uh, be sure to leave a comment below if you have any questions or anything you'd like to see, any questions or anything you'd like me to, to post for a video. Uh, songs, uh, how to play certain songs, whatever. Uh, please leave a comment. I'd, uh, I'd love to respond to that. So until next time, have the best day you can. See you then.